the Office for Tax Collection has has taken away the tax deductible status of Journalisten Watch. Journalisten Watch is a prominent uh, conservative uh, news blog and shouldn't actually have a uh, charitable status. I have made uh, a video about the removal of the tax deductible status of ATTAC, the uh, French anti uh, capitalist uh, organization that has come uh, a wildfire worldwide. And uh, I said there that it, yes, actually, it isn't just ATTAC that uh, should uh, have their um, charity status removed, it is all organizations. Because what you actually want is that organizations, and all of them, commercial and non commercial, should have low tax rates. All businesses are conducive to the public good. All businesses, haha. <laughs> um, or at least most. I mean, let's come, let's let's be real. There are puzzles and stuff. But most businesses are actually conducive to the public good. And therefore, if they are not allowed to keep their money uh, to themselves, then why should some NGO, some church, some whatever? And the reason why that becomes so important now is that when push comes to shove, all conservatives will be stripped of their tax deductible status, while Greenpeace at attack will be probably um, will retrieve it. Um, uh, Amnesty International, uh, Sea Watch, and so on, they will all receive a tax deductible status because they are aligned with the government. That's it, right? So they, the, the tax deductible status is then basically them lining up their pockets while conservatives are deprived of finances. This tilts the balance, the political balance, in favor of the left. So what you actually want is all organizations, and that's, I'm sorry to say, but that also then includes the churches, who by the way have uh, gone into a, a charity business and are basically living off the property that they have now created with a, a immigration mania. But what's really interesting about this is how the left has gone over to attacking conservatives on the on the crowns of their finances and uh, cutting off their very livelihoods. So um, this is just an instance and they are going into in the uh, article about uh, what uh, what advertisers are there involved and so on. So they are encouraging other activists and so on to also cut the, the, the other lines, uh, the, the other plot lines to that block. And make no mistakes, this is something that, uh, that will um, play a role in uh, in America, in Great Britain, and everywhere else, because we are just always ahead of the curve. What you see here in Germany is always coming to you, no matter where you are. You cannot escape. And before I dive into that article in a, in a bit more detail, I want to say I'm looking for the bottlenecks. Uh, what is uh, important for this war that's basically coming to survive it? And so far, I have two main issues, and one is really the the money system itself. So we we have to really get around um, cryptocurrency and so on to some degree, because so far, as uh, we are still a minority in some places, like let's say uh, New York, California, and so on, um, there is no way that you can pay your rent just with uh, Bitcoin and so on. You, and it, it may become illegal and so on. So cryptocurrency is just a small piece of what you actually need. And it is one of the bottlenecks, um, some currency. To keep the door open to some currency and payment processes and so on is one bottleneck that you have to watch. The second one, outside of this speech uh, stuff and, and platforms, is really the uh, the advertising. I have noticed that we actually do have a lot of platforms to speak, but um, the internet is not, I mean, what are platforms? Platforms are making us aware of each other so that we uh, com can communicate with each other, that we just get aware of who speaks about similar things. That is what a platform is about, because you can put up a server all on your own. Um, and that's also true for for the video platforms. Everybody can put up an MP4 file on a server and every every bloody browser can deal and play that uh, MP4 
uh, file. You, you absolutely do not need um, YouTube, BitChute um, and so on just to play a video. What the platform is about is that you are recommended some other videos while you are watching one. That is a platform. So that is a bottleneck, yes. But the internet is really all about search. This includes the platforms and Amazon is also just a product platform where people register their products. It is nothing uh, like a uh, middleman or something. They are basically withdrawing their position in that field and give you um, an ability to search very quickly products that most people register with this pseudo monopolist. That is what Amazon is doing. They are all basically into search. Platforms are what, what allows you to search something very easily. It is what makes you aware of what is going on around you to connect the dots. And this is the power of Google. This is the power of uh, Facebook, Amazon and so on. So this is where you have to crack it up. And then there is the, the bottleneck that really nobody talks about, but is very important. And that is really the advertising. As I just said, there is Google Ad um, Sensor, I think is, is their product. That is now basically 90% of the market. What we actually need is a decentralization of advertisement. Uh, Gap has a new browser out there that uh, is promising to do some bit about it. I have not looked into the detail. It is built on the Brave system. If you are interested, uh, check it out. Uh, I think it is one step, but I think that is really the bottleneck that we, we uh, get commerce independent of the pressure from the political left. And we cannot allow Google to control 95% of this ad space uh, business and Amazon to control all the rest of the commerce. So this is what, uh, what you have to watch. So now I go into the article of uh, what the left has to say about journalists and watch. So you see how badly they demonize them. It starts out by discrediting them by the means of association. The left does not believe in freedom of association. So somebody who is tweeting out a link to the um, blog is then guilty of advertising for it and also then suspicious of wrong thing. And in this uh, case, it is uh, Hans-Georg Maaßen. Hans-Georg Maaßen was the former leader of the Verfassungsschutz, our secret service, exclusively determined to watch our, th our thought crimes. And Mr. Maaßen um, is, uh, was alleged to be a right-wing extremist. He looks terribly Jewish. He never speaks about his religion, but he looks so much the part. I'm very sure he's Jewish and he probably has lost all his family in the Holocaust. And still, they claim that he is a, a Nazi or something. And um, they also go as far as to claim that uh, the entire platform were anti-Semitic. You may also know that uh, Journalisten Watch is, and uh, at the beginning was even more, financed by the Middle East Forum. It seems really that Zeit should think um, the more kippers they see, the more, some, the more Nazism they detect. And it goes on with alleging that uh, Journalism Watch provides a forum to Henrik Broder, who is also a Jewish, a Polish born Jew, who had, you know, who is the son of two Holocaust survivors. He has a video podcast and that is uh, displayed on Journalism Watch every week. Um, then there are the writers Akif Perinci, he is an author who had uh, quite some success internationally. There is a uh, a movie made about his uh, book Felide. Um, there is uh, another uh, author of Journalism Watch, not really a regular author, but it is mentioned here, uh, Vera Lengsfeld. Vera Lengsfeld was imprisoned under the communist dictatorship in East um, uh, in East Germany. She was uh, she was not allowed to work for a couple of years, and uh, she is a prominent a prominent Act, um, activist uh, was instrumental in bringing down the Berlin Wall. Um, Vera Lengsfeld, a friend of Henry Porter, um, is also supposed to be a right-wing extremist because she 
is against dictatorship. And uh, then there is Götz Kubitschek. It's, uh, he is a publisher, a conservative publisher, who was attacked recently. He was beaten up uh, while he was having dinner in a restaurant. Uh, then there is uh, the former Austrian Vice Chancellor Hans Christian Strache of the party FPÖ. Um, and um, Martin Selner, who has now married Brittany Pettibone. So, you know, this is the kind of uh, right wing extremism, uh, anti Semitism, blah blah blah, uh, Zeit uh, seems to detect at uh, journalists and watch. It's ludicrous. It's completely ludicrous. And Akif Perinci, by the way, the author that I've mentioned for that uh, movie, uh, he is of Turkish descent. What I also love is that uh, they describe, they characterize the articles on Journalisten Watch as um, lurid and human despising. I have mentioned that before, but you know, human despising just shows how intellectually um, deranged you are. Uh, when you accuse your opponents of hating all mankind as such, um, that's a very low blow. Um, if you cannot even uh, articulate, if you can't even articulate what your criticism is, and you allege that somebody hates mankind as such, you are losing the the plot, obviously. And then there is a word uh, they have introduced and um, recently coined, not uh, that recently, but, and it's not just Zeit that is using it, it's actually Angela Merkel and her entire uh, staff that has uh, introduced it in the last five years or so, that really did not exist anymore in the language. It was used by the Nazis, I believe, it was certainly used uh, by the communists in East Germany, and it it is best described as a verb for hate speech. Now this is um, etymologically incorrect because um, it is a more of a, met a metaphor for um, uh, describing criticism. And it comes from the hunter uh, um, sub -drum. Um It describes the situation when you chase deer with dogs until the deer exhausts and, f and stumbles over and falls down on its own before you can even make it to shoot the deer. Well, that is the situation in mind. Um, that's called Hetzer. Um, hunters used it. And the uh, regime in East Germany used it for criticism of the government. So that the poor, downtrodden, a uh, chased government feels like the dogs are behind them and you are um, about to wait for them to stumble and uh, to shoot them if you dare to criticize them. Zeit Online alleges that the authors of Journalisten Watch would hetzer against the representatives of Jewish organizations against uh, maritime uh, rescuers. They mean uh, all these NGO ships that are uh, fishing the, the so-called refugees, the migrants, out of the Mediterranean Sea. The politicians of the established uh, parties, and then it's uh, almost like a joke, the critical journalists who work for seriously um, working uh, media. Um, and this series um, is, is, there's actually, it has a double meaning and somewhat between serious and honest. So the honest, serious, working media journalists who are somewhat critical, but of, but of course they are not critical of the authorities. They are critical of the opposition. <laughs> and because the left loves uh, guilt by association, they even make the very place where journalists watch has its offices a... Um, you know, a, a cue for how evil they are. So it is uh, not distant from the uh, houses of the right-wing extremist uh, generation identity. That's personally Patty Bon and Martin Zellner. Um, and um, they are in the neighborhood of the new right Antaios publisher, publishing house. That is the publishing house of Götz Kubitschek, the man who was attacked in the restaurant, uh, which I've mentioned before.
and then they are going through who is uh, uh, having uh, their ads placed on the website. It's the COP publishing house, um, the AFD, um, a party called Pax Europe, uh, which I've never heard of. Uh, it's a small party, probably doesn't have any seats whatsoever. The Generation Identity by Spammers at Journalist and Watch. Yeah, so you get an idea of um, how they vilify uh, a given institution and how they are listing all these uh, potential sources of income, where the bottlenecks are at the moment, or as far as I can see, and um, how really our windows uh, to to fight all of this is closing down. That was it for today, and I'll see you soon. Bye.